Hey guys, Jane with the Summer Rain Channel. Welcome back. So this video is quite a bit different than what I normally do. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to answer the question that I am asked absolutely the most, and that is, how long will this product be good for? That is such a loaded question, and it's really hard to answer quickly in the comments below. So I'm going to kind of go through how you would determine how long a product is good for. How do you know what the shelf life is of the lotion or the whipped body butter or whatever it is that you're making, how long it's good for? And I go way more in depth on this in my blog, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna post a link to that down in the description box below. So if you wanna go a little bit more in depth or if you prefer to read this versus seeing me sitting here talking about it, um, that is available on my blog. And you might be like, why does shelf life matter? Like, why do I even care what the shelf life of my product is? And the reason why we care about that is safety. So we never wanna be using something that's expired or has expired ingredients in it because it can be a hazard. You can actually get sick from it. So the first thing I wanna go over is what does shelf life mean? And even things that you buy in the store have a shelf life. So if you buy a lotion, it normally says that it's good for about a year. Or if you buy a mascara, it might say that it's good for a year or six months or whatever the time frame is. It is how long you can expect that that product is gonna be safe to use and still be in the same form that it was when you bought it. So the easiest way to figure out what the shelf life is of your product, and it's a pretty good approximation, is to go by the ingredient with the shortest shelf life. Now what that means is, is if you have an ingredient that you got a year ago and it's good for two years, it probably has a shelf life of one year left. Now if you have an ingredient that's good for six months, you opened it three months ago, it's got three months left on that ingredient before it'll probably be not any good. So if you look at all of your ingredients, when you got them, when you opened them, all of that stuff, you can kind of narrow in when the first ingredient is gonna expire. Let's go ahead and assume we're making a whipped body butter and we're using cocoa butter, shea butter, and grapeseed oil. All three of these have a shelf life of two years and we just got them. This would mean that the shelf life of our product is two years. Now let's assume that we took the cocoa butter and we opened it a year and a half ago, so there's six months left on that ingredient. This is gonna give the same whipped body butter a shelf life of six months. Now let's swap out our oil for hazelnut oil, which only has a shelf life of three months brand new. The same whipped body butter with one ingredient different is gonna have a shelf life of only three months. And that is what I normally do. Now there are other factors that you need to take into consideration. And one of the variables that you need to keep into mind is disinfecting. Whenever you're making your own products, you wanna make sure that you have a clean and disinfected work area and that you've cleaned and sanitized all your equipment. If you haven't, you're likely introducing bacteria and germs and other things like that into your products, which is gonna shorten the shelf life of that product. In this one, I know sometimes people don't like to hear it, but preservatives. Anytime that you're using water in a recipe or in a formula or you have a product that's going to come into contact with water, you actually need a preservative because without one, you're going to start growing some mold and bacteria pretty quickly in there and there's no way around it aside from using a preservative. Another thing that can determine the shelf life of a product is the container that you're using. And you might be like, whoa, that doesn't make any sense. So think about it like this. If I'm making a conditioner for the shower. Let's just say that I'm making a conditioner, I'm going to store it in the shower. If I were to put the conditioner into like a pump bottle, like it has a squeeze top or a flip top or some kind of bottle, that's probably going to last a lot longer than if I put a conditioner into something like this, where I'm scooping it out with wet hands, right? Because if I'm scooping it out with wet hands, there's going to be water that's left in my container. So container can make a bit of a difference when you're determining the shelf life. So kind of think about it like, hey, where is this gonna sit? How is it gonna live? And then you can choose the appropriate container to make your product last the longest. Another thing that you wanna consider when you're thinking about the container that you're gonna use is, what am I gonna use this product for? Is it something that I can use relatively quickly, like a lotion, or is it something that I'm only gonna use a wee little bit of? So if you're only gonna use it in very small amounts, I recommend using a very small container. So there's all kinds of little tiny containers that you can use that you can make the products and then you're gonna be able to use them up before they expire. You don't wanna go make an eight ounce container of an eye serum that you have to use in two months because most of it's probably gonna to go to waste. So let's go ahead and talk about products that are oil only. So by that I mean like a whipped body butter or something that only contains oils. In there you're not gonna have a preservative and you don't need one because there's no water. It's unlikely that you're gonna get water into the container. Does this expire? The answer is yes. So at some point it's gonna expire. What happens is the oils go rancid and that means that the oils go bad. There are ways that you can slow this down but there's no way to stop it. It's gonna happen at some point. Typically we 
slow down the oxidation process, which is oils going rancid, by adding some vitamin E oil. Now, the way that you can kind of figure out when your product's gonna go bad, again, is look at all of the oils and the butters that you're using, find the one that has the shortest shelf life, and that is when you can anticipate that this will no longer be safe to use. Now let's compare that to a product with water. So think about a lotion or a hydrosol or something like that. If you were to not put a preservative in there, you can only expect that that's gonna last a couple of days before it's growing some pretty gross stuff, so you would have to have a preservative. Now the thing about that is I often see that people are like, you can pop this in the fridge, a, that would be weird. It would be very weird and uncomfortable to be putting cold stuff on your skin. Unless if it was an after sun thing, that might not be weird. But it's also going to go bad really quickly. So you're going through all of the bother of making this. Adding a preservative is just going to allow you to extend the shelf life and to make sure that what you're putting on yourself is safe to use. And anytime you have an emulsion, which is oil and water that are held together, at some point it's going to separate. Maybe not right away, maybe not before all of the ingredients go bad, but at some point it can or may separate. So if you ever notice that the oil is starting to separate from the water, that product is no longer good anymore, you need to toss it out. So even though we know looking at the ingredient with the shortest shelf life gives you a pretty good estimation as to when it's going to be bad, there are things that you want to look at. One of the things that you want to look at is change in consistency. If you had a really thick creamy lotion and all of a sudden it's starting to feel thinner or the consistency is changing, it's probably not good anymore. It's probably bad and it's probably time to throw it out. Another thing is changes in color. So if you notice that your product is starting to discolor or if you notice that your product is starting to change in its smell, the aroma of it isn't the same, those are all signals that the product is no longer good to use. So what are some things that you can do to help extend the shelf life of your products that you're making, right? Because we really want to get them to last as long as possible. We're going through all the bother of making our lotions and with body butters and shampoo bars and all of the things. The number one thing that I recommend is sanitizing your work area. And that sounds so simple and it sounds like common sense, but sometimes we don't think about it when we're making the stuff. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're using equipment that is sanitized, you wanna have a disinfected area when you're working, and that can help to extend the life of your product because you're less likely to be introducing germs and bacteria into it. Another thing that you can do to help extend the shelf life is by wearing gloves. So wearing gloves would go ahead and protect the product from your skin, therefore reducing the possibility that you're getting germs or bacteria or other things into your products. Another thing that you can do to help extend the life of your product is using distilled water. That's just one simple thing that you can do that's relatively inexpensive that helps to prevent you from adding contaminants into your products. As I mentioned earlier, we can also, in oil-based products, add some vitamin E oil, which helps to slow down the oxidation process, which is the process in which oils go rancid. So adding a bit of vitamin E into a body butter will help extend the shelf life of it a little bit. It is not a preservative, but it will help to extend the shelf life of your product. Another thing that you can do is avoid weird ingredients. And I know that sounds really funny for me to say, but I'm serious. If you're using fresh strawberries or bananas or things like that, you really can't expect that it's gonna hold very well in your products. That's probably gonna make it go bad pretty quickly. So without having like fancy equipment or a lab to send your stuff to or some serious testing, it can be pretty difficult to determine the shelf life of your products. However, there are things that we can do to kind of estimate what the shelf life is gonna be. And that starts with paying attention to what ingredient expires first. Pay attention to when you order something. Um, pay attention to when you open something. Pay attention to how each ingredient, is it starting to discolor? Does it have a little bit of a smell? All of those things. Also to the products you make, is it starting to separate? Does the color change a little bit? Is the smell different than it used to be? All of those things are signals that an ingredient or the entire thing is going bad and it's probably time to stop using it. Now you can get pretty close with your estimations and I know me personally, I don't make huge batches. I make smaller batches just to kind of make sure that my stuff doesn't go bad. And this is actually the first video that I made where I'm not making something i'm just sitting here talking so let me know in the comments down below if this is something you like if there's more questions that you have if there's more things that you would like me to explain because i will gladly explain them to you i really hope you enjoyed the video i hope this helped to clarify a few things for you bye